What made the Jets the right job for you right now? You know, it's uh, it, it came back to the people. Um, having the opportunity to meet with Christopher, Jaime, and uh, and Joe. I mean, they're they're just uh, really really good people, and just having the real, the ability to talk to them on a uh, and go through this interview process with them. Uh, it, I just couldn't help but feel authenticity from them. And I'm, I'm a big believer in that people make things work. It's the people that make things move forward. And, uh, and when you can have three individuals like that uh, invite you into their circle, you just can't help but feel like success is on the way. Around the league, though, I, I want to get your – before you met Joe, before you even got into the building, as you're coaching the Niners, you're coaching against even the, you know, the Jets even this year early in the season – uh, love that turf. Well, well, we'll get to the turf. Because I'm sure now the turf's fine, but, but obviously back then it was a bit of an issue. But I, I do, I do want to ask you, though, because you'd gone around the league. You know, obviously you, you've been around the league. You put your time in. But in that time, the Jets really have not been a good team, and they've had problems. What was your perspective of the Jets before you got to know those in charge right now? You know, there's – And did it change? It, no, they're going through the interview process um, and – getting a chance to visit with six teams, you know, you, you walk into these interviews with perceptions around the league and the way fans talk and media and then people around the business that they, they call just to give you a heads up. And so um, having the ability to go through these interviews, it was pretty interesting, you know, because you leave some of them and you're like, hmm, you know what, the, those perceptions are pretty accurate. But when I walked into this place, and the one thing I'll tell fans and anyone who's listening, throw away the perception, I promise you. I mean, these... The people who are in charge of this building and the people who uh, Christopher and the Johnson family have, have asked to, to run this with Joe and Jaime, and uh, they're unbelievable people. And it, like I said, it's people that make this thing work. And so uh, the, they, they, they display authenticity, they display humility, which, which I believe is a key component to anybody who's trying to move things forward because they're able to listen, they're able to take in new ideas, they're able to implement uh, different aspects of what people believe to uh, into their overall philosophy of what they're trying to accomplish. And uh, and so when you look at this organization and where it's moving, I, I really think it's heading in the right direction. One thing I do know about this organization is that they will provide you with the resources that you need to be successful. And right now you have plenty of draft equity. You have plenty of salary cap space. You have a, a basically a blank slate to kind of paint the picture that you want you know, with you know Joe Douglas, with Christopher Johnson, um, when you look at it, you know, we when I was playing here, we had this thing play like a jet and what that meant. Now I know you said gas, no brakes, all gas, all but gas. when you when you talk about and what we talk yeah, about, gas. when we talk about what it means to be a jet, what is your uh, idea of what you want the Jets to be like when they step on the field? What should fans expect in style of play and type of player? So obviously the, the, the mindset of, you know, you, you guys heard it yesterday with that whole all gas, no break and that mentality, but it's all encompassing. It's all a buildup. It's all a buildup to when we hit the field, the effort that we play with, the technique and the fundamentals and execution and the violence at which we'll do it. And so there is a, uh, there is a hair on fire uh, uh, mindset that we want with this organization. And so I, I don't have many cliches with regards to sayings, with regards to that, but what, what they will have is a black and white understanding of what they're being asked to do, play in and play out, to be able to unlock all their athleticism so they can play as fast as humanly possible. And I think that's all players want. They don't want to think about what they have to do. They want to be focused on how they have to do it, and, uh, um, and that's what, what it's going to be focused on. Now, now, I love the violence, but we're not biting kneecaps, are we? We ain't doing that. <laughs> no, no, no. No, all within the rules. Of the all within the rules. We had, yeah, we had we had two press conferences yesterday. One, well, yeah, one was yours, and, and you had you had Jets fans ready to run through a brick wall yesterday with your press conference. And then there was Dan Campbell in, in Detroit, and he was talking about biting kneecaps and you know everything else like well, that. So it is the first. You, you can't say it, coach, but me being from Detroit, I'm like, man, come on, man, this is all Detroit need is a dude talking about biting kneecaps. We played the Hawker music I, 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 underneath I, I know that. <laughs> I know Dan. He's going to do a great job. I'm, I, I've got a lot of excitement. I'm still a Detroit fan from afar, so I'm, uh, I think they're going yeah, to have uh, yeah. they're, they're in good hands. One of your most violent, most talented players is Quentin Williams, and traditionally we we've used to seeing him in a in a in a three four type of system. And um, 
do you do you envision or have those decisions being made about the type of defense that you're going to play, or does it does that uh, depend on the type of free agents that you're able to to get in free agency and, and maybe through the draft? You know, I, I I think you'll appreciate this in that you know most of the NFL has gone the three receiver sets anyway. You know, it's uh, most people are right. already deploying a four down front, and so when you look at this Jets team, uh, and even a guy like Quinn and Williams, he was he was the next man up in terms of uh, uh, best players available for us if uh, back in uh, San Francisco, if uh, Nick Bosa wasn't available and uh, Hmm. to have, to have him like he can, he can easily do what's being asked to do. He's been doing it. It's, it's a four down front. Can you rush the passer from a four, four down front? Absolutely. He can. So if he can do that, then he can, he can get off the ball, penetrate and set edges in the run game and, and convert run to pass and all that stuff. He's just a massive body that we feel like if we move him forward, at a very, very high rate, he's going to create a lot of this. He's going to wreck games. And so um, there's going to be guys that we move to kind of fit more of the mold of, uh, with regards to the style that we want to play. But uh, at the end of the day, th- these are professional athletes. They're God's gift to athleticism with regards to the sport of football. And uh, you can find a place for, for all of them, you know. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus right now.